put to Ricky. On the gut you jump. My picky give me breaking our money. Bought a whisk. You got and quits. Well, welcome to the Matrix, because I didn't write any of that. My computer did. What's going on, everyone? And welcome to episode number 11 of Everyday Python Projects. Today's project is quite interesting as it has some serious potential for professional use. We're going to use machine learning, specifically a neural network, to generate rap lyrics. There was a ton of code that went into this, but honestly the majority of it was collecting and cleaning our data. It's arguably the most important step in machine learning, as good models are only as good as the data you feed it. Crappy data, crappy model. Models are pretty easy to find, but collecting and cleaning the data is rarely ever done for you, so it's really good to know how to do it and to have those skills. I'm going to be using a model that Andre Karpathy already constructed, aka the Vanilla Recurrent Neural Network. He's a director of AI and autopilot vision at Tesla, and he wrote a really badass algorithm to do it. Special thanks to Carrick, who has no clue who I am, but inspired me to create this video and have my own take on it. Lastly, there's a much more refined version of the Vanilla RNN, that Andre also wrote, but he did write it in the programming language Lua. I figure I can try and use that model in a second video, that way we won't have to go through the whole data collection process and we can focus just on the results. Alright, let's do it. And don't forget to smash the like button now! Please. There's certainly a way to do this in one step, but I'm showing you all the steps that I went through and how I thought about solving this problem, since programming is rarely ever smooth. First, I had to import all of the libraries that I needed. Then, I had to find a website that had a ton of rap lyrics. Enter Ola.com. It has almost every rap lyric for every artist in existence, so it was a great place to start. Once I got to the website, I quickly saw that I could get all the rap lyrics from the following URLs. If you see here, we have all.html, and if we go to the end, this changes to all underscore five, and let's say we look at the groups P through T, all underscore four. So it was pretty easy to see this was just a group of five different URLs and it was structured like so. Additionally, the URLs on Ola were also structured like this per artist. Here we have ola.com slash anonymous, and this is present for every URL, artist name, the album, and then the name of the song. So once I was able to get all of this information, I then wrote a function that retrieved all of the links from each of the pages, stored all of the links in a list, and used the power of multi-threading to do this substantially faster than sending in one request at a time. So this function right here gets all of the links that we need. In this case, it's getting the links for each of the artists. And this piece of code right here is how we implement multi-threading within Python. In order to do this, you need to have this library installed. From concurrent.futures, import thread pool executor and as completed. This start and end right here was just for my own reference to see how long this took. So multi-threading is absolutely crucial for this to work. Multi-threading allows tasks to be run in parallel with each other, which means we can cut down on the amount of time we're scraping for all these links quite substantially. Every function in the rest of the video is going to use multi-threading to speed things up. The code I wrote took about half a second to do it with multi-threading and without took about five to six seconds. So there's definitely an advantage to using it. Once we got all of the links, it was time to unpack each of them and place it into one master list as well as remove all of the duplicate links. So all links will house every link that we were able to scrape and then unique links will remove all of the duplicates in all links. Finally, we'll take that and turn it into a pandas data frame. From here, I then had to remove certain links that either didn't lead to any lyrics or lead to a page where it had a different format than the majority of all the other pages that had the lyrics. There were only a few to remove in the latter, so I was fine excluding these lyrics from the data set. So all this means is I'm removing any of the links that had Ola in it, Amazon, iTunes, APK, all text, all HTML, or rap reviews, as each of these links didn't have any lyrics. Once that was done, I found all the indices of the lyrics I wanted to remove, dropped them from our data frame, and then saved the parent directories 
to a CSV. Remember, these are the directories that we're trying to get. It's ola.com slash anonymous slash two-face, or in this case, it would be the name of the artist. This is what we're trying to scrape. For each of those artists, there are multiple albums that we'll need to scrape since the lyrics lie within those albums. So the first thing I do is to read our previous text file that we created earlier right here, and we'll be reading it right here and saving it to the list dir list. Then I created a new list to house all of the subdirectories where the URLs would now have the artist name as well as their album name. Then I basically copy and pasted the code from earlier where I make a function that passes in the URL from our text file initial directories, and it searches for all of the links on the page with the exception of any link that doesn't have a backslash in it as well as any link that has the word anonymous. Since every album page has a URL anonymous, it would be redundant for us to include this. Then I unpacked each of these new paths, appended them to a list, unpacked sub dir list right here, turned it into a data frame, and then converted that into a CSV called total sub directories. And that's what we're doing in this line right here. In case you guys want to visualize this, when we click on an artist, it comes up like so, where each of these are the albums for that artist. The reason we included a backslash is that we don't want to include the link for this URL because it won't lead us to any of those lyrics. However, if we click on this, then you can see that these are all the text files, which are all the songs for this album. Then I had to get all the links to each text file, which were contained within the album of each artist. So I did what all programmers do and reuse some code I already wrote. So this is how I did it. I repeated the same process from last time, only this time I look for any links that have .txt in the URL. Note that the total number of links for the albums totaled around 8300 for me. However, there are just over 60,000 links based on our search criteria that contain the lyrics to each song. It took around 17 seconds to collect all of the albums, but it took 460 seconds to collect all of the text links. Finally, we're on to the most resource-intensive portion of data collection, which is downloading all of the lyrics from each text file. We're basically taking the exact same approach to collecting the data like we've done several times now, but there are a couple things to look out for. The first thing we're doing is reading in that text file that we saved earlier. Then we're introducing time.sleep right here because we're going to be sending over 60,000 requests from one IP address and you need to give the script a break so that your IP address doesn't get blocked, which to be fair is completely in Ola's jurisdiction if you violate their terms. Next, this bit right here with soup.findpre was needed so that we could extract only the lyrics and nothing else. We can see here that for this song, there are random social media links for Facebook and Twitter like so, whereas for other songs like this, we only have the text and no social media links. After we extract all of the lyrics and put them into lyrics list right here, we just have to write it to a text file and then we're all set. In this case, I wrote two spaces between the end of one song and the beginning of the next so that it was easier to identify the blocks of lyrics. The last thing I had to do was remove certain swear words from the text file as well as any non-English characters. This part I'll leave up to you as you might want to include all the swear words as well as any non-English characters depending on your country of origin. Once this is done, you can copy and paste the code from Andre Karpathy's Vanilla Neural Network model from the link in the description below. So once again, just want to clarify, I did not write this code. This is from Andre Karpathy. It is his code that he wrote for this vanilla recurrent neural network model. All right, once you copy and paste the code, you can see it's quite long and it's made up of two functions, sample and loss function. 
However, there are only four things that we need to change as users. If you were creating this yourself, you could definitely change any part of this model. However, if you're just trying to use it for test purposes or getting familiar with neural networks, there are only four things you need to change. First is the name of the file you're trying to open right here. This has to be changed to the name of the file that you want, not what he has put in his source code. And the second, third, and fourth items are right here. Hidden size, sequence length, and learning rate. So the larger the hidden size, the more neurons there are in the model. In a neural network, each neuron performs a mathematical operation on the input data, and then it computes an output, which is then passed on to the next neuron. If we wanted to visualize this, Google Images has a great image where there is the input layer, the hidden layer, which is what we were just talking about, and then the output layer. So in this case, where I've specified hidden size of 75, there are 75 hidden layers in this neural network, which would be the equivalent of having 75 of these purple circles right here. Sequence length shows how many times those neurons in the network are replicated. A higher number means more replications. However, that can take up a lot of memory depending on how big our dataset is. Just remember that if you want a neural network to get better at learning, it's always going to be some kind of a trade-off between memory usage and accuracy. We can think of the sequence length like this. So we have each of our neurons right here, those hidden layers, and within those layers, we have something like this. For us, our sequence length was specified as 15, so we would have 15 of these boxes per neuron. They'll take in the data like so, that's what these arrows are right here, compute an output, and then pass it on to its next box right here, and all of this will happen per layer. And finally, learning rate is how much the model should change in response to an estimated error each time the model weights are updated. It's usually between zero and one. However, if it's too small, you might have a really, really long training process. And if it's too big, you could have a suboptimal fit. So for our purposes, we can try and test it out with different values and then see what we get. Very important, neural nets take a really long time to train. So you might have to let your computer run for several hours as it performs tens of millions, if not hundreds of millions of computations so that you can have an effective model. I let mine run for about two hours with a hidden size of 75, sequence length of 15, and learning rate of 0.1 like you see right here. And these were the results that I got. So it's separated like so. These are the different iterations. I didn't take all of them. I just copy and pasted notable ones and I tried to do it throughout the entire process where it was coming up with each of these iterations. But we can see the 107,000th iteration, which only took um, a few minutes, is already starting to get kind of a structure to it. Like we have a couple lines right here and it's mostly gibberish, but the fact that it was able to get this structure this quickly in a vanilla recurrent neural net model is quite impressive. We can even see in the 108,000th iteration, we're already coming up with English letters, come, I came, so, bid, in, Andy, up, bone. As we continue through the iterations, we're starting to see more and more of an actual structure to the verses and less gibberish and more English words. I started to notice a much bigger difference when I went from 200,000 or so iterations up into the 700,000s and millions. So here on the 704,000th iteration, we're actually able to put together multiple words into one sentence and they kind of make sense for the most part. I mean, this right here says, I gotta me dead them, take in the drop mass to weak judder, I don't got la, I don't got like ya, befeastin don't tow it. I mean, it definitely, <laughs> it definitely has some work, but considering what we had up here with some gibberish, a lot of this right here, which I don't even know what's going on. That's a pretty quick learning rate for only 30 or 40 minutes of training. And as we continue into the millions right here, 
you're really starting to see a lot more words and a more accurate structure with these six line verses like so. And to be frank, while some of these lyrics don't really make sense, honestly, if you were to listen to this on the radio, it could it could kind of pass. Like, put to Ricky on the got you jump. I mean, I could easily see Young Thug doing something like that. You throw on some auto-tune and you will won't even know what he's saying, but chances are he could be saying something like this. It's really not that bad for coming up with one-liners or just random phrases we could throw in. Like, I bet you Migos would say something like this. My picky... Give me break in our money. Could totally work. There you have it. You now have the tools to develop your own type of deep learning and become possibly the next best rapper with the power of Python. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. Well, welcome to the Matrix.